Alright, it's a faith build. It's a for real faith build in Dark Souls 3. When I think faith build, I think heals and regeneration. I know some people might think lightning, um, uh, lightning spear, lightning arrow. The lightning spear spells, I'm not a big fan of. It seems like the player model can side strafe faster than the spell moves and the hitbox on them is very narrow. So, it, it just doesn't seem like it's worth. Regeneration, on the other hand, as you watch me cast Replenishment, and then swap over to my Pyro Glove and cast Warmth. Warmth costs 28 Faith to cast. So, while it is a Pyromancy, it's also a Faith spell. So, the entire... This build is, is a Spear of the Church build more than it is an Invader build. Um, and the reason that is, is because Spears of the Church can't heal. So, if you want to make a build that focuses around regeneration, then this is the place to do it. And there have been uh, a million duelists over the course of the, what, two years now since this game's been out. There's been a million duelists who have utilized regeneration during duels. And the reason they do it is because your opponent doesn't have any way to heal. So it, it gives you a leg up. It gives you something that they don't have. So even something as small as the Sun Princess Ring, which, you know, you see that's like the ring swap. You know, life ring plus three, ring swap into uh, Sun Princess Ring after you've been hit. Even that little bit of, you know, regeneration is... It's better than nothing. And your opponent probably has nothing. Spear of the Church is a little different. Because... Your opponent has their full Estus Flask. You have a Painting Guardian, one of which who's probably already dead by the time you show up. Um, and then you have your own whatever means. But you can't use Estus when you're Spear of the Church, obviously. However, the game does go ahead and give you three blue Estus Flasks. Even if you don't have any Estus Flasks set to... Ash and Estus, the game still gives you some, which I think is a pretty fair uh, hint that the developers probably intended for you to have some spells when you came into this fight. And as they should have, because having heal spells totally levels the playing field. This build is... Um, this is going to focus all on the healing and regeneration aspect of faith builds. A lot of this was inspired by a guy named I Am Amish, and I recommend you... He has an entire like series dedicated to a Spear of the Church with uh, healing miracles, and I think he used blessed... Uh, I think he used mostly lightning-infused weapons, but I think he had blessed-infused weapons. Um... I've taken that from his build, but I also have Warmth, uh, which I took from a guy named Sir Grey Fox A, and his build was a Pyromancer Spear of the Church with Warmth, and he would use all sorts of spells to basically keep his opponents away from his Warmth spell. That was the strategy to it. Now when I started making this build, I knew I wanted to take those two builds and I wanted to mash them together. Because like I said, Warmth is a pyromancy, but it's a faith spell. It, only, it doesn't have any intelligence requirement at all. It's all faith. So it just made sense to slap those two together. When I make a character, I will typically make a straight, great, ultra great spear. Those are like the things I like, you know, I'll have a straight sword, a great sword, an ultra great sword, and uh, a spear. I'll also typically have like a glaive. So this build has a lightning infused straight sword, a blessed straight sword, uh, a blessed spear, uh, a lightning infused claymore, and a lightning infused lucerne. And I was playing around a little bit with the blessed Lothric Knight great sword, which you'll see in this invasion. My problem with it was that it didn't put out enough damage for the the weight and what I mean by that is 
I had to wear like a very specific set of armor, so that way when I swapped over to the Lothric Knight Greatsword, I wasn't fat rolling. So the Lothric Knight Greatsword, I think, ended up doing like 50 damage more on an R1 than the Claymore. So I decided, you know, that's not worth it. But you'll see me, this is, this build can do invasions. It still has, you know, six uh, regular Estus. I've got one Ashen Estus. Um, and the lightning infused weapons put out enough damage that you can do invasions with a build like this. Um, don't, you know, don't think it's only for Spear of the Church. But when I went out, I was like, all right, let me see how it goes in invasions. Also, look at these masterful <laughs> backstab techniques. I haven't played Dark Souls 3 in a minute, so, you know, this was, uh, this was me trying to figure out, like, how the fuck do you roll backstab? <laughs> I got the hang of it after a while. But so the character creation was, you know, all right, I'm going to take all those weapons and I'm going to decide which ones are lightning and which ones are blessed. The reason I decided to make two straight swords is because I can have a lightning straight sword and it will do respectable damage. But then I can go to a blessed straight sword and my opponent might not realize that I've swapped weapons. So they'll have to, you know, respect the damage on that straight sword, even though it's not going to do that damage anymore. So there you see 700 damage on an R1, R1 true combo with a blessed Lothric Knight Sword. Why do a blessed Lothric Knight Sword? Because Lothric Knight Sword blessed gives it a bump to its physical damage. It makes the physical damage faith scaling. And it gives it a bump to lightning damage because lightning damage is also faith scaling. That's why that's why Lothric Knight Greatsword works as a blessed infused weapon. But for the weight, I just wasn't feeling it what you saw right there that's i'm fighting this dude with the straight sword and when he goes to heal i'm swapping to the ultra great sword and i'm going to hit him with that because i'm going to punish his estus with you know a bigger heavier weapon he's just kind of going nuts swinging uh that axe around um this invasion actually shows off my i hate when people are like, I don't hate it, but a lot of times people will ask me, hey, have you ever tried regeneration in invasions? And I always say no, because it, it it's counterintuitive to how invasions work. Remember how I was talking about how great regeneration can be in duels when your opponent doesn't have any access to any kind of like regeneration, right? Okay, well invasions, the time you spend casting regeneration spells and standing around and regaining your health is time your opponent is spending waiting to resummon their buddy. That's time they're spending using to um, equip Way of the Blue and summon in some, some police to come gank your ass, right? So it doesn't make sense. Now this guy's just running from me, so I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and I'm just going to reset and I'm going to put all my buffs on, I'm going to start regenerating, and I'm going to make him regret that he's just running, right? I was also using the Blessed Partisan, and the Blessed Partisan doesn't do a lot of damage. But if I have to swap to the Partisan, it means my opponent is probably just running away from me. So I don't need it to do a lot of damage. I just need it to do a little bit of damage as it chases people, and it can be regenerating me at the same time. Also, I have a Blessed Cestus, so that's also giving me some regeneration. So the Blessed Partisan isn't, you know, it's not necessarily good for damage but it's good for everything else it can chase people i can regain health while they run that's a win-win any little amount of damage i do is fine um and it works great when you pop somebody's tears of denial right but as you can see during that time this guy was able to resummon his uh his friend back so now i have to deal with the 2v1 i've still got four estus but that doesn't, you know what I mean? If these guys come at me together and they just start like, if say I roll into a wall, well, that's it. I'm done. Um, that's the end of the fight. And I died with four Estus and a bunch of healing spells, you know, so it didn't necessarily do me any good. Now that I know he's summoning the same phantom over again and that phantom is putting his sign down 
near where the player is. I know that they're probably using a password, so I don't have to worry about them summoning in some randoms. So at least I've got that going for me. I'm able to, I go to the mobs and I cast my regeneration spells to try and lure them into me, um, but they don't want to do it. So we have a little bit of a stalemate. So the hosts use a seed of the giant trees to break the stalemate, which it does. I have to leave. I'm not standing near the enemies anymore. But they they don't go attack the enemies, and they don't come after me. So the stalemate resumes. Now we're just at a stalemate in a different area. So swapping over to the Great Bow, which this build can use. Um, and I've got the Obscuring Ring on. And I'm just going to harass these dudes. And this is how we're going to play <laughs> the stalemate game. Hopefully, it's in the host's head that I can regenerate health and so that this is not doing him any favors but that would require some you know I think most players when they get invaded especially you know really PvE minded people um, they don't think about that sort of thing they're just uh, you know so a lot of the mind games that you might be trying to play are they, they just go to waste because the person you're fighting doesn't have those games in mind you know what I mean they're not thinking about that sort of thing um, yeah so I managed to hit the guy with the ultra great sword and I thought well that damage was a little little underwhelming but my faith isn't that great my strength isn't that great on this build so it makes sense that would be a great weapon to have on a build that had more faith and more strength probably um, but for this level it doesn't matter as much um i'm level 77 i've got 33 faith i think i actually have 28 faith but i wear the priest ring the priestess ring um i'm using the ring of favor and the prisoner's chain to get my vigor and my endurance up uh to where they need to be at this dude just gets fucking roll caught <laughs> for days all right so i know he wants to heal so I'm going to swap weapons to the Claymore, something that does a little bit more damage. And if he heals right in my face like that again, I can really punish him for it. The straight sword's great for hitting somebody and then getting them moving, getting them, you know, whatever, getting them up, out, and about. And then you can swap to something that hits a little harder. So it works in invasions, which was kind of the point. Um, I still had, what, four Estus after that invasion was over, and I still had like a full, almost a full FP bar. Um, so the build kind of starts coming together. I kind of start figuring out how it works, how I'm going to run it. We're using regeneration here against the Mad King's Crucifix. Before the fight even fucking starts, I'm using it. Um, because this thing is ridiculous to fight against. Fortunately, the R2 hit has, you know, pretty heavy stagger value on it. So he stays stunned for, I think, longer than he was comfortable with. And I think that got in his head a little bit. And then the explosion went off and caught him because he was panicking. I see there's another phantom over here. And I'm, all I can think about is, man, he's going to the host is going to resummon uh, that Mad King's Crucifix. And I can't deal with that in a gank. And then it turns out the host is just hanging out here, letting two other people beat the game for him, because this is Dark Souls 3. So, in Dark Souls 1 and in Dark Souls 2, I fucking love faith builds. Um, they're a lot of fun. Dark Souls 3, however, they seem really limited. I've said this a million times, but they have over-nerfed Wrath of the Gods into the ground. This fight right here, though, is what this build is meant to do. This build is meant to fight three and four people as the spear of the church. So we start that fight off and we immediately kill one of these dudes because he's camping the spear, which is like the dumbest fucking thing in the world you can do. That spear fragment that I'm using, because I'm fighting four people, I get the spear fragment a lot. Now you can see the damage these guys are doing. They've got me down to half health, but they're not doing a lot of damage with each hit. So now I've got two sources of regeneration going on and you can see my health ticking up firmly 
and then you can watch and you can see when these dudes hit me they don't do enough damage and it doesn't matter they can all have plus 10 weapons and really good builds there was four of them and because there was four of them the spear of the church gets literal poise dark souls one poise and he also gets uh, these huge absorption bonuses and defense bonuses when you start casting warmth on top of these miracles the people you're playing against literally cannot do enough damage you are regaining more health than they can do when someone sees you have warmth they it's like they have to come to it like fucking moths to a flame right they they don't want you regaining health they want to regain health it turns this thing into a little bit of uh, you know a king of the hill type situation uh, a tug of war almost with the warmth and the regeneration it changes everything because now I'm at full health again and these dudes can't do enough damage to stop me from killing them the spear of the church after if you start a 4v1 and you kill everybody and it becomes a 1v2 or god forbid a 1v1 the spear of the church becomes fucking unkillable basically they're like michael myers it's they're just gonna get you it's really hard to kill them especially if the spear of the church somehow has full health against a solo host who started the spear of the church fight with three phantoms if you started with three phantoms and now you're a solo host and the spear of the church has full health good fucking luck it's also a bit of mental warfare as well because it is so absolutely disheartening uh, and and demoralizing when all of the damage you've done is just gone and all of the resources that you used to get the fight to the point that it was at are not coming back you're not getting your Estus back but the spear of the church now has full health this player is like they have nothing to do at this point I have so much poise that even if this player tries to turn and burn, it's not going to stagger me, and I'm just going to hit them. I'm just chasing them with the spear, catching their panic rolls. Easy. And that is the sort of fight that I had envisioned with this build. Now, when you come across a solo host, or someone who god forbid has summoned patches this build can just be absolutely overkill i am amish talked about this sir gray fox talked about this both in their respective channels when they were doing their spear of the church builds both of them mentioned this it's it's too much especially against someone who has no idea what they're doing the hardest fight for a spear of the church is a 1v1 where the host knows what they're doing this is it's pvp but it's also a dark souls boss so it's intended that the player win this the host should win this fight but there are things that are broken in this game that you can exploit and take advantage of and make it harder for the host to win what you just saw, if you ca if you summon patches for this, you've given me poise, and that's all I need. I don't get a big, huge defense absorption bonus, but I do get a little bit of poise. Now, turn and burns are worthless against me. I'm going to just pelt patches over and over again with undead hunter charms until I break his AI. I'm going to keep hitting him and pelting him with hunter charms, and eventually his AI is going to think, all right, I need to heal. And it's going to try and drink Estus, even though he's Hunter Charmed. And it, he will just get caught in a loop doing that over and over again. I'm going to kill Patches every time. That's I will, I will go for Patches first. Just like the host and his team should go for the Painting Guardians. Your NPCs um, are... 
they're, they're at war with each other. But the Painting Guardian is better than Patches because the Painting Guardian can heal the Spear of the Church. Again, there's not much this guy can do. Uh, I've got full health. I'm chasing him around at the Partisan. He just opts to disconnect. But then he brings his waifu character back into the Spear of the Church fight with his three buddies. And now they're really going to make me pay. Oh boy. <laughs> this is the last thing you want to do against a Spear of the Church build that can heal. This is why I made this build, was for these fights exactly. You can't do enough damage to me when I start getting the heals working. And I don't need that much time to get the heals working. I'm going to use the Divine Spear Fragment, and I'm going to separate your group, and I'm going to put you, you know, God forbid it be, you know, one on one side and three on the other. Sometimes it's two on one side and two on the other. But I'm just going to split you up. When you summon four people, I can use this Divine Spear Fragment like every ten seconds. Not to mention, you're chasing me. You have to chase me. So when you come running at me and I'm using that Divine Spear Fragment, it's going to hit you. It's going to do damage. Chasing me does damage to you. I've got the poise. I've, I can one hand a great sword and swing and still have poise. And I'm still going to be doing basically the same amount of damage because I'm an elemental build. That's a backstab with what I assume is probably a fully upgraded Gale's Greatsword, and it did no damage. When I start getting low on health, I can start thinking about healing, but you can see how much health I just regenerated in that sentence. From backstab to backstab, you can see how much health I regenerated. You don't have to panic. Um, oh man, I was like salivating during this invasion. I was I was so excited to finally have one of these. But I was able to, you know, I'm able to relax. I don't have to freak out or panic just because I get at low health. Between the Painting Guardian and myself, I'll get that health back. And the greed kicks in when the warmth goes out. So that's a faith build. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out. Later, y'all.